In this video, we will be looking at how to find the intersection between a line and a plane. And before we do that, we have to think about how a line and a plane can intersect. So the first way is that the line actually passes through the plane at a single point. So let's say here's our plane and here is our line and there's an intersection right there. The next is that we have a plane and we have a line that is perfectly parallel to the plane. So in this case, there are zero points of intersection. The next is we have a plane and our line is directly on it fully, which means there are an infinite number of points of intersection. So every point on the line is a point of intersection. Now, how do we differentiate between these three setups? And it's going to start by finding the normal between the direction vector of the line, so vector m, and the normal of the plane, so vector n. Now, if you take the dot product between m and n, and you do not get zero, there is one point of intersection. You have the first scenario. There's no connection between the direction vector and the normal. Now, let's think about the normal and the direction vector a little more. So we know our direction vector for the line will follow like it says, the direction of the line. The normal, however, is the vector that is perpendicular to the plane. So if our plane and our line are parallel, then we would expect the normal, which is perpendicular to the plane, to also be perpendicular to the line because the line goes in the same direction as the plane. So if that's true, then the dot product would be zero for both of the last two scenarios where the line is parallel to the plane. Now to differentiate between the two scenarios, we want to check, well, is there a point on the line that's also on the plane? Because if it is, we're in this scenario and there are an infinite number of solutions. If there isn't, we're in this scenario. So let's try our first example and see. Determine the intersection, if any, between each line and plane. I'm going to start with the dot product. So we're going to take our direction vector, negative 2, 3, 1, and the normal, negative 1, 2, 1, and we get 2 plus 6 plus 1, which is 9. The normal and the direction vector are not perpendicular, which means the line and the plane are not parallel. So there is going to be a point of intersection. And the way we're going to start this is just like how we found the point of intersection between lines when we were given their vector equations. And that's by getting the parametric equations out of the line. So we have x equals negative 6 minus 2t y equals 9 plus 3t, and z equals negative 1 plus t. Now I can take each of these parametric equations and sub them in appropriately for x, y, and z. And then everything will be about that parameter t, and I can isolate for it. So we'll have negative, and then negative 6 minus 2t for x, plus 2 times 9 plus 3t for y, plus negative 1 plus t for z, plus 4 equals 0. Now I'm just going to clean this up. So 6 plus 2t plus 18 plus 6t minus 1 plus t plus 4 equals 0. And we'll get 9t plus 27 equals 0. And if I isolate for t, I will get negative 3. So that means the point of intersection occurs 
when the parameter on the line is negative three. Now I can take this and sub it either into the vector equation or the parametric equations. It does not matter. So I'll go into the parametric ones. Negative six minus two times negative three. That's negative six plus six, which is zero. Nine plus three times negative three. That's nine minus nine is zero and negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Therefore, point of intersection is 0, 0, and negative 4. If you wanted to do a little check, you know that this point exists on the line because it came from the line equation. You could always do a left side, right side check on the plane to make sure the point is on the plane as well. All right, next examples. Let's start off with the direction vector. normal. So here we have 0 plus 6 minus 6. That is in fact 0. Therefore, the line and plane are parallel. Now we want to know is the line distinct from the plane or is the line sitting right on the plane itself. So what we can do is check and see this point that we already know is on the line, is it also on the plane? So I'll do a little left side, right side check with it. So I'll do left side is negative 2x, but for x I'll put 3, plus 3y, but y is 0, plus 2z, but z is 0, plus 6, and I get negative 6 plus 0 plus 0 plus 6 equals 0. There's my left side. My right side of the plane equation is zero. They match, which means that the point is on the plane. Which means the line is on the plane. The line is on the plane. Infinite number of solutions. Every point on the line is a point of intersection. So every point on L2 is a POI. All right, great. Let's try the next one. Again, starting with the direction vector and the normal. So that's 0 plus 1 minus 1 is 0. Again, we have a parallel line and plane. So now I'm gonna check, is this point also on the plane? So my left side, x is one, y is two, z is three, and that gives me negative three, whereas my right side is zero. So therefore, the line is parallel, but distinct from the plane. There is no intersection. Okay, so now we've seen every scenario of how a line and a plane can interact. So actually have a single point of intersection or have an infinite number of intersections where the line is on the plane or just no intersections at all because the line is parallel but distinct to the plane. The final thing we're gonna look at is the distance between a point to a plane in R3. Now, this equation, I'm not gonna go into much detail because its formation is almost identical to how we found the distance from a point to a line in R2 because a line in R2 has a Cartesian equation as well, but we are using our knowledge of scalar projections. So in this case, the scalar projection of the vector created between the point and a point on the plane to the normal vector. So how, does, how much does this project onto the normal? Because if you find that, then you'll find that shortest distance because the shortest distance is always from a perpendicular line 
of that plane to the point. So we need this distance here, uh, which is a portion of the normal. And here's what our distance formula looks like. Like I said, very similar to the distance from a point to a line in R2. It's just now we have that Z component. So you're going to take the absolute value of you plugging in your point into your Cartesian equation and dividing that by the magnitude of the normal. So let's give that a try. Find the distance between the point 206 and the plane 3 x minus y minus 2z plus 10. So the distance is going to be the absolute value of, take your Cartesian equation and plug in the point. So 3 times 2 minus 0 minus 2 times 6 plus 10. All over the magnitude of the normal. So 3 squared plus negative 1 squared plus negative 2 squared, all square rooted. And we're going to have for the numerator 4 and then for the denominator the square root of 14. And I'm just going to clean this up. So I'm going to rationalize the denominator and then reduce my fraction. And there we are. All right, next, find the distance between the line and the plane. Well, if they're asking me to find the distance between a line and a plane, that must mean that the line is parallel to the plane and distinct from it. Otherwise, the shortest distance between the line and the plane would be zero if they actually had a point of intersection. So I'm just going to double check the direction vector. So 2, negative 1, 0, and the normal. And we have 2 minus 2 plus 0, which is 0 in fact. So they're parallel, and now I can go ahead and find my distance. And because they're parallel, I can find the distance between any point on the line and to the plane. And here's a point right here. So the absolute value of negative 1 plus 2 times the y minus 3 times the z minus 2 all over the magnitude of the normal and we get 18 over the square root of 14 again rationalize the denominator and reduce the fraction and there we are another distance example but this time line to a plane where they're parallel now if the line was on the plane when i calculate the distance i'd get zero because the line is directly on the plane all right final example determine the intersection if any between each line and plane all right so for the next one the line is given in the symmetric equation form so i am going to start off by getting the parametric equations so x plus 3 over 2 equals t cross multiply or multiply by 2 and isolate okay y minus 2 over negative 1 equals t y minus 2 equals negative t y equals 2 minus t z plus 5 over 4 equals t z plus 5 equals 4t z equals negative 5 plus 4t and now i can check direction vector with normal. I can look at my parametric equations. I can also look right here to see the direction vector. So 2, negative 1, 4, dot 2, negative 3, 1 is 4 plus 3 plus 4, which is 11. So there is a point of intersection. And I have my nice parametric equations, so I'm going to sub those in the Cartesian equation of the plane. And clean up. The solving is very linear. It's just starting it off. 
All right, so if we collect our like terms, we have 11 t's, negative 22 for the constant. And if we isolate, we get two for t. So now I'm just gonna go into those parametric equations to get x, y, and z. So x is gonna be negative three plus two times two, which is one. Y is two minus t, so zero. And z is negative 5 plus 4 times 2, so negative 5 plus 8, which is 3. So therefore, the point of intersection is 1, 0, and 3. All right, next one, line 2 and plane 2. Check those direction and normal. So we have 10 minus 1 minus 9, and that's 0. So we can check to see if the line is on the plane or not. So I'm going to use that point and do a left side, right side check. So 2 times 7 minus negative 2 plus 3 times 0 minus 4. That's 14 plus 2 plus 0 minus 4, which is 12 not zero so therefore the line is parallel and distinct from the plane no lots of intersection now let's say you didn't do the dot product to check this and you just went straight into the parametric equations Let's just see what would happen. So the parametric equations are 7 plus 5t, negative 2 plus t, and just negative 3t. So if we plug that into our Cartesian equation, 2 times x minus the y plus 3 times the z minus 4 equals 0, so that would be 14 plus 10t plus 2 minus t minus 9t minus 4 equals 0. The t's would just cancel out. I have none of them. And then we have 12 equals 0. Well, that is obviously not true. You get this false statement and that would be your clue. Oh, there was no solution to this scenario. If, however, the line was on the plane fully, then we would have a true statement like zero equals zero. So you can figure out your situation by going through the algebraic solution and then interpreting um, your, your statement at the end when the t's disappear. And that's it for your intersection between a line and a plane and a little bit on distance between a point and a plane in 3D.